The windows of the First Congregational Church of Los Angeles are among the most beautiful examples of the art of stained glass in the city. Designed, crafted, and installed by the Horace Judson Company in the early 1940s, they are all memorial gifts from church members. The magnificent rose window at the west end of the sanctuary creates a breathtaking vision of Christ enthroned. It is called the Te Deum window. Radiating from the Christus in the central medallion and glowing in the jewel tones of stained glass are kings, angels, saints, martyrs, and prophets. At the opposite end of the sanctuary in the chancel are more windows devoted to Christ. The central window is the life of Christ window. The trifoil at the top depicts the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and in its center are the letters Alpha and Omega. The medallions below represent the life of Christ from the Annunciation and include adoration, presentation, flight into Egypt, Christ as a youth, Christ in the temple, baptism, scourging the temple, blessing the children, the Last Supper, the Kiss of Judas, Christ before Pontius Pilate, the Crucifixion, and the Opening of the Tomb. In the north wall of the chancel is the Youth of Christ window. It contains four medallions. At the base, Jesus is shown among the beasts of the barnyard, symbols for the sermons of his ministry. In the second medallion, Jesus is reverently seated at the feet of his mother, learning from her. In the third, Joseph and Jesus are engaged in their trade as carpenters. Finally, Mary and Jesus are at the fountain, filling jars for their home. The south chancel wall contains the adult Christ window. At the base is the woman at the well. Whosoever drinketh of the water I give shall never thirst. Above that is the Sermon on the Mount. Let your light so shine before men. Next, a meeting with Nicodemus, except a man be born again. And above that, we see the angel with Christ in Gethsemane. Not my will, but thine be done. The six aisle windows of the sanctuary commemorate the miracles performed by our Lord. Each window has three medallions, portraying Christ's power over nature, over evil spirits, and over sickness and death. Of the four south aisle windows, the first, at the rear of the sanctuary, shows the changing of water to wine at Cana, healing the infirmity of the woman, and the raising of Lazarus. The second window shows the feeding of the multitude, healing the palsied man, and healing the blind man. The third shows the fish and coin tribute, casting out the dumb spirit of the boy, and healing the woman of consumption. In the fourth window, we see the miraculous draft of fishes, healing the cripple at the pool of Bethesda and raising Jariah's daughter. There are two north aisle windows. The one nearest the chancel depicts walking on water, the man with the withered hand, and healing blind Bartimaeus. The other shows Christ stilling the storm, healing the leper, and raising the widow's son at Naim. In the north transept is the Old Testament window. The rich blues are symbolic of the steadfast faith of the Jews and their belief in one God. In the trefoil crowning the window, the rose section depicts the Mosaic law and the four major prophets. At the base of the left panel, Joseph displays his coat of many colors to his brothers. Above that, Adam and Eve partake of the fig tree with their sons, Cain and Abel. Next, Abraham lays his son Isaac upon the altar as a sacrifice to God. Just above, the angel of the Lord blesses Hagar with a son, Ishmael. At the top of the panel, Samson crumbles the pillars of the temple. In the center panel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stand unafraid in the fiery furnace. Next, Daniel quiets the hungry lions in their den. Above that, Elijah and the chariot of fire are shown. The fourth scene shows the children of Israel crossing through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And at the top is the angel of the Passover marking the doors. 
In the right panel, Heliopolis is being punished for robbing the treasury of the temple. Isaac blesses Jacob. Moses is found by the princess of Egypt in the bulrushes. The servant Elizabeth finds Rebekah at the well and brings her to Isaac for a wife. Cain slays his brother Abel. In the south transept, we find the New Testament or Apostles window. The left panel shows the selection of Matthias. The stoning of Stephen. The conversion of Paul. And Paul before Agrippa. The center panel depicts Peter and John healing the cripple at Bethesda, Philip baptizing the Ethiopian, the church distributing food to the poor, and Paul shipwrecked. The right panel shows the angel by night opening the prison doors, the raising of Dorcas, Paul on Mars Hill. The apostles collecting funds for the needy in Jerusalem. The clear story is that part of the church high up on the walls at either side. Of the nine clear story windows, the four on the north are devoted to Old Testament teachings from the creation through the patriarchs and prophets to the coming of Christ. The one nearest the chancel is the creation window. At the base, the world is shown as a void over moving waters, with dividers indicating the firmament, the creation of the first and second day. The third day, the land is divided from the waters and the earth yields herbs and fruit. The fourth day, the sun rules the day and the stars and moon the night with a greater and a lesser light. And God created every living creature that moveth and blessed them. Be fruitful and multiply, the fifth day. God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed life into him, and man became a living soul. Adam and Eve are expelled from the Garden of Eden. The tree of life is marked by a flaming sword. The second of the north clear story windows is the patriarch's window. At the base is the heroic figure of Noah, thanking God for his safe deliverance from the receding floodwaters. Abraham stands by the tent door in the plains of Mamre and greets the three messengers of the Lord. Behind him is his wife, Sarah. Jacob approaches the place where he met Rachel. In his hand is the pilgrim's staff. The three sheep are the three flocks watered from the well's mouth. Joseph, as the prince of Egypt, presents himself to his brethren. Patriarch, priest, king, Melchizedek, holds aloft the chalice he presented to Abraham upon his return from the battlefield. In the lower left is the tabernacle, and on the right, the crown of royal priesthood. The third north clear story window is called the prophet's window. Here we see the figure of Jonah emerging from the mouth of the great fish. This represents to many a symbol of the resurrection of our Lord, while other scholars accept it as a type of rebirth of man through baptism. Daniel rejoices over the fall of Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold and the triumph of the Most High God. The prophet Ezekiel stands among the captives by the river of Kebar as the heavens open for him to see a vision of God. In the midst of a great whirlwind of fire and cloud are four living creatures, each having four faces and four wings. Jeremiah is visited in jail by Zedekiah, the puppet ruler for Nebuchadnezzar and predicts his downfall. The purging of the iniquity of Isaiah as the seraphim places a live coal from the altar on his lips. The fourth window is the Tree of Jesse window. It is one of the most beautiful windows, designed to portray the human and spiritual ancestry of our Lord stemming from Jesse. The kingly ancestors begin with the reclining figure of Jesse. Nahum and Malachi are with him. The next medallion portrays King David with Zechariah and Amos. The majesty of King Solomon is flanked by Hosea and Micah. Joel and Obadiah stand with Rehoboam. 
At the apex of the window is seated the Virgin Mary with the Christ child held before her as the flower and fulfillment of the Old Testament and as a full and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of man. Surrounding the Madonna and child are seven white doves, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. The theme of the five South Clear Story windows is God's power made manifest in the lives of men and women. The window nearest the chancel is the missionary window. In the medallion at the base, the Emperor Constantine envisions the cross in the sky and vows, by this sign I conquer. In the forest, St. Francis preaches to the birds and animals. He yields all worldly pleasures. The great Leonardo da Vinci, who touched upon all the arts of human conception. Dr. David Livingston, who brought light to darkest Africa, preaching the doctrine of love. One of the greatest preachers of all time, Henry Ward Beecher of the famous Plymouth Congregational Church in Brooklyn, shocks his congregation into action by auctioning a little white girl to the highest bidder in protest against black slavery. The second window from the chancel is the Gothic or Builder's window. In the medallion at the base, St. Louis, King of France, walks barefoot through the streets of Paris, carrying on a cushion a crown of thorns after his return from the Crusades. At his right is the hermit monk, St. Bernard. The great monk Theophilus is shown here. He not only created windows for the cathedrals of medieval France, but wrote a magnificent treatise on stained glass, precious metals, oil painting, and other allied arts. Wycliffe translates the Bible into English. With him is a younger man, giving the scholar strength and encouragement. Here is Gutenberg, at work with his helper, taking off the first copies of the Bible printed with movable type. The top medallion portrays Columbus, appealing to Queen Isabella for funds, and she is shown opening her chest of jewels, which will provide the money to outfit the little fleet of three tiny ships which were to sail the broad seas and open new horizons for Christianity. Third from the chancel is the Pilgrim Faith window. There is no greater example of faith than the story of the Pilgrim fathers and mothers who founded America. It's the story of the bringing of religious faith and freedom from Europe to the New World, where they became the basis for a new nation conceived under God. The lowest medallion shows the arrest at Plumbers Hall in England those taking part in the separatist movement which forced the little band to seek a new land in which to worship freedom. The next medallion shows the separatists in exile in Holland under the leadership of John Robinson. And here we have the landing of the pilgrims at Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. And here, a pilgrim family on the way to church. The house of worship is a small log cabin shown in the upper left-hand corner. The crown of the window shows Benjamin Franklin addressing the Continental Congress, exhorting them to seek the guidance of God before continuing their debate. In the background stands Independence Hall. Next is the California window. Here we watch the fever of the Western movement of Christianity across the continent and around the Horn. At the base is Father Junipero Serra traveling the King's Highway in California converting the Indians to a new faith and establishing missions along the way. Senator Benton and John Fremont are shown, carrying out the manifest destiny of the new state by expansion to the Blue Pacific. Next, we see the romance of the Pony Express rider dashing his communications across a nation. His bravery and courage succeeded in drawing the East and West closer together. Here is portrayed the great surge of humanity moving by a Conestoga wagon across the Buffalo Plains. A man kneeling at prayer to thank God for their safe journey. At the top is the beautiful ship Flying Cloud with full sails set for the west as it sailed around the Horn. The last of the South Clear Story windows is the New World window. It depicts New World leaders in the fields of science, literature, law, and medicine who have used their abilities to serve God and man. At the base are Dr. Robert Milliken, the great physicist of the California Institute of Technology, 
Dr. Louis Pasteur and Dr. Alexis Carroll. Here we see Abraham Lincoln, Mahatma Gandhi, and Jean-Jacques Rousseau. One source says Leo Tolstoy, the great spokesman for freedom and the abolition of slavery, exponents of man's individual dignity before God. In the background, a hand holds a torch. Thomas Alva Edison and the gifts of light, radio, motion pictures, and television. Freedom of the air, dedicated to the Wright brothers and the airplane. They are launching their plane at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. In the background is a descendant of that first plane and the memorial statue at Kitty Hawk. At the top are the statesmen, Hugo Grotius, who proclaimed the freedom of the seas, Winston Churchill, who would defend freedom with blood, sweat, and tears, and Woodrow Wilson, whose ideal was to secure freedom by international brotherhood. The windows of First Church. Just as each individual window tells a story of its own, so the combination of all the windows tell the great story of the Bible and of the church in the modern age. They are indeed a benediction of light, enhanced by our memories of those to whom they are an enduring tribute.